Hey everyone! In this video, you'll learn all about subdivision surfaces. How do you create a nice curved surface like this? Well, if you know the equation, you can plot some simple shapes. But what's the equation for a dog? We need more advanced mathematical tools for dog modeling, and we'll use something called subdivision. Let's start by creating a squircle. You know, a cross between a square and a circle. A squircle. We'll begin by sampling vertices on a square. Now let's average each vertex with its two neighbors. That means multiplying each vertex position by one third and adding them up. This has the effect of moving the corner in a little bit. But when you average this vertex with its neighbors, it stays in the same place. Let's apply this averaging step to all of the vertices. So now if we connect our new vertices together, we'll have a new shape. And if we repeat this averaging operation a couple times, we get our squircle. We can use the same approach to generate other smooth shapes. For example, let's see what happens if we apply it to this shape. Hey, that's cool. It's an infinity sign. All right, now suppose we want a smoother squircle. We can add more vertices. But everything slows down. It takes a lot more averaging steps to get the shape we want. Another problem is that things break down if you keep going. Eventually, everything will shrink down to a point. We can solve both problems by modifying our approach. Instead of adding all of the vertices in the beginning, we'll add a few at a time. We'll start with one at each corner, and then we'll split each edge by adding a vertex in the center. Now we'll average each vertex with its neighbors as before. But now instead of applying equal weight to each vertex, let's weight the center vertex twice as much. This averaging scheme results in a slightly different shape. Now let's split again, and average again, split, and average, and so on. If we keep going, in the limit, we get this pretty curve. So what is this limit curve, and how does it relate to other types of curves we've talked about? Well, remember in the splines video, we talked about something called a B-spline that has some really nice properties. Amazingly, it turns out that our limit curve is a cubic B-spline. It's composed of four cubic curves with second-order continuity where they join. It's kind of incredible that repeated splitting and averaging operations produces four polynomial curves, but it does. We can treat our original four corners as control points, and if you move them around, you can get other nice subdivision curves. And we can make a nice subdivision squircle with eight control points. You can make more interesting subdivision shapes with more control points. Does this one look familiar? It's a bug. But how did we get the antennas to be so straight? You can get sharper corners by repeating the same control point twice. All of the green points shown here were doubled. And if you repeat the same point three times, that will force the curve to pass through it. Now the great thing about subdivision is that it works in 3D too. Here the icosahedron on the left is subdivided once and then a second time. Here's how subdivision works in 3D. Let's start with this set of triangles. First we'll split each edge like we did in 2D and divide each triangle into four. That's the splitting step. For the averaging step, we'll average each vertex with its neighbors, just like we did for curves. But mesh vertices can have different numbers of neighbors. For example, this vertex has five neighbors, and this vertex has six. The averaging weights are pretty simple for the six neighbor case, and the vast majority of vertices will be like this. And here's the general formula that you can use for vertices with different numbers of neighbors. Keep in mind that these triangles all live in 3D on this mesh and we can continue to subdivide to get even smoother shapes. 
and in the limit, it will converge to a well-behaved surface with second-order continuity almost everywhere. What we just described is called loop subdivision, a popular choice for triangular meshes. For quad meshes, a similar subdivision approach called Catmull-Clark is more common. Let's try loop subdivision with this boxy dog model. After one iteration, it's already looking better. And if you keep going, we get a nice smooth dog model. Here it is without the triangles. Ta-da! I hope you've enjoyed this video on subdivision surfaces.